control. <laughs> it's time for inspirational talks with Laura Simmons and friends. All right, y'all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Inspirational Talks with Laura Simmons and Brands. I am Laura Simmons, and today I have with me Ursula D. Allen. Hi, everybody. And Margaret Green. How you doing? <laughs> And our special guest today is Jay Envy. Is Jay Envy. Okay. Hold on. Okay, wait a minute. Jay changes. Okay. Okay, and our special guest is um Mr. Jay Envy out of Chicago, Illinois. He is a tattoo artist and a illustrator. So, guys, so let's talk. Let's talk about it. We're going to start out with our real estate queen. We need to get a little gold nugget today from you. Okay, today I want to talk to you about capital gain taxes on your investments. When you purchase property and you're interested in buying and selling, you want you know you know everybody's want interested in flipping, doing keep on wanting to flip their property as soon as they buy it. Well, you can do that, but you got to keep in mind unless you use every bit of the proceeds from the property that you purchased and you fixed up and you flipped it, mm-hmm. you would be subject to twenty percent capital gains tax on that on that um, return. So if you bought that house for $70,000 and you put $50,000 in improvements in it, that's 120, what, Mm -hmm. um, $120,000, $125,000 that you have, um, that you have invested into the uh, purchase of that home. And you sold it for say $225,000. They're going to tax you on the increase of whatever you, you whatever is left minus the amount you paid for it and the money you invested into it. So if you oh, invest wow. fifty thousand, they're going to deduct fifty thousand that. from that money, and they're going to deduct the price that you paid for it, and they're going to tax that at either twenty percent, and it, it really ranges from zero percent to twenty percent. It all depends on how much that in uh, how much income you have but you will need to consult your tax preparer because i'm not a tax preparer but you will need to consult your tax preparer to find out exactly how much tax um, capital gains tax you will be paying i think a good rule of thumb to try to um try to minimize the tax um um, penalty you you would have is to hold on to it for at least two years or more um, that helps um, ease the brunt of the tax of that tax that comes on that property. So when you're making that decision on whether to do become one of those famous flippers of real estate, keep in mind you're going to have to pay taxes on that money on the on whatever you earn above the cost of it and the improvement of it. And then um, and that's my gold nugget for today. Can can we talk about that again on Tuesday a little bit more? Sure. Okay. Sure can. Yeah, that's good information. Yeah. Um, so, Miss Ursula, what you got in what you got in your arm? Um, um, I just want to ask everybody: it, did did y'all watch? Did y'all get to watch Janet Janet Jackson movie? Oh yeah, I did. I saw I part guess. of it. I didn't see all of it. I didn't see all of it. I heard of what she said about Alicia Keys. <laughs> oh yeah. Now, I, you know that's crazy because I did not see that part, but I did see the whole. Sh- I did see her whole shine. I know. I, I was wondering, was that something she said 
after the show? Or what right, that's the, what I was wondering because I don't remember I that, remember but I just that. thought maybe I missed it. You know, yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear. I saw it on on, on the internet, and because everybody been talking about it on the internet, even uh-huh. everybody. And because uh, as she said that um, she's just been, a, she was um, always in awe, or attracted or whatever to Alicia Keys. And I was like, wow. I said, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she would say something like that. Yeah, like yeah. I said, I said, well, you know, I said, I think sometimes the older we get, the more um, it's free. <laughs> yeah, we don't, it's like you can care less. They can care less about what somebody think then. But uh-huh. it's, um, the thing about it is, it making everybody start to wonder. Well, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Look, exactly. is that why you can't stay mad? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because, but you know, that's what they were saying for years ago. They were saying that she went both ways, though. So, really? Yeah. I never yeah. heard that. Yeah, yeah they, heard was, that. Uh, they were saying she was kind of wild, that she was like, um, a little wild out there, but, you know, that's yeah. hearsay, you know. Hearsay, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Um, I had re- heard that the one of the reasons why her and Jermaine Dupree broke up because he had cheated on her. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what she said in the movie, too. She said I that said, really? he, he cheated on her, and that wasn't something that she was expecting because, you know, they were, he and he, and he admitted to it. He admitted that he cheated on her. He was saying that he cheated on her. Um, he said all these lovely women around him at all times. He said it he said it made him more attractive that he was dating right. Janet Jackson. Of to course, women. that always happened. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's, that's what uh, male and female keep, though. Lord keep my car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's what men and women, because you notice an ugly guy or ugly girl all of a sudden become attractive. I'm not saying mm-hmm. she's ugly or anything, but that's what happens. That happens in any relationship, whether they could good looking or not. You mm-hmm. become extremely attractive. attractive. Right. Now, if you ain't dating nobody, they consider you desperate, so they ain't gonna look at. They ain't considered. <laughs> the moment you start dating somebody, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, dang. you all, you become extremely attractive. I don't know yep. what it is, but I guess they say if, if they want you, then I, I, I want what's to you. So I might want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it, but that's yeah. what usually happens. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think. I think um, that's what happened with me when I used to <laughs> when I was dating one of the celebrities back in the day. Oh <laughs> lord! Oh lord! <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing in my tea, y'all. <laughs> she was dating Flavor Flav. <laughs> Flavor, flame. <laughs> You're about to make me choke. <laughs> oh my god! You, know you had the pink flavor voice. <laughs> <laughs> of all of the celebrities, of all of the celebrities you could have picked, you decided to pick flavor. You, know, you almost spit out that. <laughs> Hey, Laura. Hey, Laura. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> Flavor play. So now, now, oh, that was a, that was a low blow. <laughs> Flavor flame. I said, I said you oh, left the door open. You I left the door open. You I left the door open. Flavor play. I said a celebrity. Somebody. You left the door open. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> And she but walked anywho, right on in with Flav. Yeah. <laughs> but anywho. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, did you, did you guys um hear about that uh, pastor? Uh, I can't think of his name. Bishop I don't want to say Lord much Jones. about him. Huh? Bishop Noel Jones. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Oh, did you yeah. Actually, I did saw, you... I actually watched it on um, on YouTube. Oh, the proposal? It, it, yeah. It, it yeah. was not a good one. It, it it actually reminded me of um, um Martin and Gina when Martin proposed to her. <laughs> yes, I will marry you. you. <laughs> okay, Gina. 
Yeah. I'm like, that wasn't no pretty nice proposal. And then they said he broke out with a jack wet. Um, yeah, um, it was a like a ring out of a crackerjack box. Yeah, I was I'm like, like, was that for real or was they just joking about that? Oh, that was for real. And then he said, um, he didn't. Want, he said he was 72. He just turned 72, and he said he did not want to, um, um, I guess grow old alone. So he needs somebody to push his his um his wheelchair. Yeah, and that part cracked me up. I was like, wow. I I did laugh at that when he said that part. I was like, (laughs) want to make sure that they somebody be able to push his wheelchair. (laughs) Lord, you better be careful what you say, man. It's like I'm trying uh to tell you. I'm saying, he he know he got power in his words, so he really had to be careful about that one. Yeah. I was like, oh Lord. But it yeah. was um and when I saw that, I was like, man, she was all she was smiling. I'm like, I hope yeah, she was. She I'm, was I'm, happy at the fact that yeah. she was happy. that's why I was wondering, was it real? I'm like they said it was really? real because and, of the fact that she wanted him to marry her years ago. Yeah, she, she had been wanting him to marry because even when they did right. they broke um, up, got back um, together. When they did Pastors of Hollywood, that's how she became right. in the forefront. Because yeah. they did Pastors of Hollywood, and he was on there one time. And mm-hmm. um, one of the pastors told her that he would never marry her. Oh, so, wow. Wow. Yeah, I was like, wow. It's so wow. Um, so that's why when I heard about it, I was like, oh, I said, wow. I said, wait until he got 72. He said he um, he said he, he didn't know whether or not he was okay with letting go of the fact that he can go whenever he want to. Mm-hmm. If he want to go out, of, if he want to leave the country, he can go. He don't have to ask answer to nobody but you know i was like yeah that's why some people do that they don't get married because they don't want to have to answer to anybody you know so that's the and and so i was surprised because men and women when they get a certain age they get set in their ways and it's not that easy to get along when you get set in your ways right especially when you get up in age yeah Yeah, it's like a chore you know so more power to them. Godspeed. I hope everything work out for them. You know, after being, I think they have been, they've been together 28 years. Yeah. She stuck wow. with them that long. And they said that, and and then to have him propose to her with a crocodile ring, I don't know. <laughs> that's not cool. That, was, that wasn't cool, y'all. I'm sorry. They said it was a diamond, but they said it was in, in a crocodile box. Yeah. Okay. It was a diamond. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's true. But anyways, anywho, you want to talk a little bit about Black history? Um, sure. Um, our For our Black history moment, we are featuring Miss Michelle Obama. Hey, there she is. Welcome. Yay. You represent the sisters well. I have yes, to ma'am. She does. So, Michelle Obama was born on on January the 17th, 1964, to our My Forever president, Barack Obama. Yes. During during their tenure as POTUS and Lotus, not only did she give up her career as an attorney, but she was also a very active part of um, President Obama's campaign. Um, yeah, she was, um, she launched a program called Let's Move that promoted physical activity and healthier eating. Um, in 2009, she worked with a local elementary school to, um, they planted a huge garden on 1,100 acres of the White House, Mm -hmm. which was big, you know. But Trump pulled it up. (laughs) <laughs> okay, first thing you did, get that garden out of here. Out here. Yeah, you know he did. <laughs> yes, I want murder. Right. Right. <laughs> Probably some poison, poison vegetables. But no, in 2011, she formed an organization that helped to create more educational and employment uh, opportunities for veterans called Joining Forces. His organization mm-hmm. also helped to um, shed a light for us civilians on some of the challenges that, um, you know, veterans and people in the military had to deal with. 
These are just a few of things that she initiated, you know, as her tenure as um, first lady. But she continues to be an influential person, you know, in our country as far as she's still advocating for families, for children, for young girls. And Michelle Obama will always be my first lady. Yes. I don't know that's right. Yeah, that's she's right. classy. And her, she's from and, Chicago too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I rem- yeah, originally I remember from South when, Carolina. Um, though. I remember when really? my uh, yeah, when she's he really from South Carolina. Yeah, mm. I remember when um she when President Obama was in the seat, and my sister, my older sister, um, Lord God rest her soul. I remember she used to always talk about the way he walked. She's like, oh yeah, who walking president? Him and Denzel got, got that walk. They got that walk. Yes, he put they that, do. Them sunglasses on. He had Ooh. every woman after him, boy. Just mm. fine. Just, and yeah. I, I talk. We discussed this last time. I do not like light skinned men, but <laughs> he but you got have my exception to him. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and and being that he used to live in Chicago, he's he ended up taking having that same kind of accent. Cause when I think about it, he sounds just like my brother Richard. Because oh, he has wow. sharp tone when he talk. Oh. And I when I, I when I would listen to the President Obama, I said, you know, say, who are you? Who did he remind me of? And when I think about it, he reminded me of my brother Richard. Let me tell y'all something so funny about President Obama. What? So when President Obama was running for Senate, I remember him in front of Walgreens on 55th and Lake Park. And um, I didn't know who he was. I remember him trying to give me some of his brochures and stuff. Mm -hmm. And and guess what I did? I was like, sir, I don't want that. (laughs) Shame what? on you. You probably wish you could go dumpster diving now. <laughs> I said, sir, I don't want that. And then, then when he became president and then his kids came into the store, I never forget it. That he um his their nanny brought the kids into the store because they both were in um Washington. Um the um Michelle and Obama had went to Washington and stuff. And they had the kids were still here before they transferred them over to the schools and stuff out there and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they came into the store, and I remember I was like, "So how does it feel to be the the president of the United States' daughters?" Just like that, and they was like smiling and stuff. They was young at the time, so mm-hmm. yeah, they were smiling and everything. Then um, Michelle came into the store one day. Michelle Obama came into the store and she had all the security around her boy. She a tall glass of Kool-Aid boy. She's tall. I love her. Uh huh. She's a sweetheart though. And she, um, she, yeah, she was. It was really, it was nice to see them. See, Daniel so- Johnson said, "I met President Obama at Walgreens." Yeah. He said that's his hometown. Um, 55th and Lake Park was where he used to always be. She said, yes, I met Michelle too. She's beautiful. Yeah. She yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, she is. And and she has such grace. She's just like, yeah. You know, I love her. Yeah. 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 That is so cool. But before we get going, let's get started on our next adventure here. We got a um tattoo artist he's an illustrator out of chicago y'all he the hottest tattoo artist around in chicago right now he's the hottest illustrator that i know personally in chicago okay guys well before i bring him on i wanted to do this though i wanted to send a birthday wish out to Sean. Happy birthday, Sean. Happy birthday, Happy Sean. Birthday, Sean. <laughs> then I want to send one more birthday out to Uh-oh. our Gary O. Oh, my goodness. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Now, 
That's very nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. That's real nice. Yeah. You surprised me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all. So no longer ado, we are going to bring out our guest, Mr. Mr. J M B out of Chicago. Yay, Jason. Yay. Hey, Jason. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Good. How are you? Good morning. All right. Cooling in the studio. Yes. How are you? Okay. Yes. All right, Mr. J. So tell us a little bit about yourself for those that don't know who you are. All right. Well, for those that don't know, I'm a tattoo artist here out of the south side of Chicago. Um, been tattooing professionally for nine years. Um, I own my own private tattoo studio. Um, illustrated a couple of books. Um, so I, I, you know, and I do a little music on the side. So it's a love of mine. Um, yeah, music cool. as in what? Singing, rapping, writing? I, I can't sing. My voice too deep. <laughs> but I can't sing. But I can rap though. I can, I, I okay. can rap. Okay. I've always did the rapping um, ever since I was a kid, putting words together. So it was always something I like to do, always something I enjoy doing. Okay. Danielle Johnson said, hello, Jay Envy. What's happening, Danielle? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, that is awesome. You going to give us a couple of bars before before the hour is up? Yeah. Maybe he could break something, but, I'm, but I'm that's what tired. Uh, you retired as of today, right? That's <laughs> like five minutes ago. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so Jay, your journey is very interesting. Tell us a little bit about your journey as um this young kid that enjoyed drawing, and how did you get started? Tell us. Uh, well, I've always like loved the art of tattooing. The first time I've ever seen anyone do it, I saw my mom do it. I was a kid. My mom did a tattoo on my auntie. It's <laughs> old school, hand poke, JoJo on the arm. And I'm like, mama, you can draw people's skin? And she said, yes. And ever since then, I was just, I was in love with it. Around 12 years old, she wow. bought me my first tattoo magazine. I begged, this, I begged her. Like, yo, mom, please give me this magazine every time we go into because they would have those magazines back in the day in the 90s. They would have those magazines behind the register at the gas station with the porn and the adult Playboy magazines. You know, I never understood why she didn't want to give me those books until I got the book and you have people <laughs> full naked, full body suit tattoos. But it was art. It was mm-hmm. art. It was, it was a beautiful thing to see. That you had serious collectors like that, and they was wearing these artists' work on them like that. It was just amazing. It was amazing to see. Wow. Okay. So how long have you been actually drawing? Because you really have a serious skill there. I'm looking at some of your pictures in the background there, and you really have some nice work there. Thank you. Thank you. I've been drawing since I was three. So I've been okay. drawing for a long time. I, that's my first love, drawing on paper. And then I saw it later when I saw my mom do it on skin. And uh, it was a long journey getting into the business, though. As a as a young black man getting into the field of tattooing at the time that I was trying to get into it. Um, mm-hmm. From the moment I turned 18, I got my first tattoo, little, little bitty Mighty Mouse. And I'm talking to the owner, which back then, like now it's a little different. But early 2000s, late 90s, ni- early 90s was biker white owned tattoo shops. Mm-hmm. So you going in those tattoo shops and you getting a little flash on the wall. Some some type of Sailor Jerry uh, flash or something like that, and uh, they getting you in and getting you out. They really don't care about you or nothing. They getting you in, and getting you out. So uh, them guys wasn't really trying to give me a, ch- a shot at learning the art of tattooing at that time. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it was, wow. it was, a, it was a, a real like tight knit biker gang type uh, pro white <laughs> community mm-hmm. at that time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh-huh. a lot of us, a lot of black artists went underground and was self-taught. And some black artists got good at it because they're naturally talented. They got good at it and they brought other black artists in and started teaching them how to do it. And that's mm-hmm. actually how I got on. Uh, a young black artist by the name of Philippe taught me. He brought me into the business, saw what I was doing and was like, yeah, man, I can, I can show you how to do this the right way. 
and he took me under his wing. And it took about, you know, lie, it took me about 10 years from being 18 to 28 until, because I was 28 years old when I met Philippe, to actually get into the business. But that's just how persistent I was in the, mm-hmm. getting into it. It was, a, it was something I really wanted to do. Mm. That's good. So, so can I ask, in, I'm sorry, go ahead. So did you get in a lot of trouble when, when you were in school about drawing? Because I'm sure as, you know, learning, you know, drawing <laughs> as a kid, I know that you was doing that in school because I remember making little hearts and the bubble letters when I was in <laughs> high end grammar school. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, you get caught by the teacher doing it. You in trouble now. I never got in trouble for actually drawing because the Mm -hmm. teachers liked what I was able to do. So a lot of them were kind of like in awe of what I was able to do at that age. I think the only time I got in trouble for drawing something, I was in eighth grade. And, you know, young teenage kid, (laughs) that influence around you, your homies influencing you. And they like, man, draw this, draw that. So I was just, I actually drew like an inappropriate gang like scene. Uh (laughs) I was a kid. It was a comic oh, strip. Wow. And this was the first time that I really knew that I could possibly be an illustrator, if need be, because he was dis- he was just basically describing everything he wanted me to draw on this little sheet. And I basically made like a live comic. And it was funny oh, to the point where even though I got in trouble, the principal didn't even want to like suspend me, suspend me. He kind of gave me in-school suspension. He and probably he wanted it. <laughs> I don't even have my drawing no more. He took the original drawing from me. No, I feel, that's why I said I knew he took it. Yeah, he took the <laughs> from me. Yeah, wow. it, it was crazy. And my friends who they watching this, they know who they are. They know what they asked me to draw, and they know it was on that paper. We just don't keep it at that. <laughs> <laughs> they got you in trouble. They got me in trouble, but trouble. I took one for the team, though. Okay. Wow. That's good. That's so okay. that's good. Go ahead, Ursula. Ask your question. I'm sorry. I, I know why. I- no, it's it's okay. I want. I just wanted to ask you about something you said. You said um, I never heard it expressed like that. You said collectors, um, and you was talking about tattoos. Is that what you call people who get like the multiple tattoos? Yes, yes. Because mm-hmm. you have you have people who get tattoos, right? Some uh-huh. people just want to get something to express themselves to form a change, bad breakup. We got to cover that name. And you have some people who really are into full body suits. They are serious collectors. They get, and you wouldn't even never know it because some of them may not even have it on their neck, but they have a full body piece. Full, Under their you know, clothes. Mm. Yeah, so they, they're collectors, yeah. I never heard of that. Collect. <laughs> I'm a collector. I got a, a body full of tattoos and I'm going to collect more, you know. It's a way of me expressing my art for the field that I'm in. Wow. Do, Daniel, does it, does it become addictive? Because it seems like some people start becoming addictive to tattooing. It's like they get a tattoo and all of a sudden they go going to get another one. And then they go going to get another one. It's only addictive when it's good. When the work's good. Every person who don't who got one tattoo and don't want to get another one, it's because the work was horrible. Hmm. You know, that's not person. true, Jay. Because well, if that was the case, I, 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 that's not the reason why I didn't, I'm not getting another one. That you still got hurt. one cover up, though. You that, already said you want yeah, to get Yeah, but that stuff up. hurts so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I wonder how they do it. Because I'm like, yeah, that, it, it, it act like well, it don't I hurt. was in tears. Well, to, um, in today's world, though, there's so many things that they can use to help with the pain. Like, there's yeah. so many brands of numbing yeah, cream you don't have to because will help with the pain let me show no. y'all my my tattoo and, and some people are i just you know pain enthusiasts oh wow that's mine that's and that old. thing hurt it so bad oh my goodness you had a cover-up though yeah i had a cover-up but that had to get a cover-up so cover up so bad much. y'all see that that's a yeah. good one too so a cover-up is when you put something over an existing tattoo yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. How do they? How do you do that? Because I'm, I'll be looking at some of the ones I, I've seen some of your work on Facebook of how the before and after, and I'm like, well, how did he do that without it showing the other tattoo that was there before? How you know you what? can't even see? You don't even see any indication of what the other tattoo look, was when you see the finishing product. Honestly, um, I really don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, just, it's kind of it kind of kind of comes to me. What I do is, um, I look at the existing tattoo. I see how bad it is, how big it is. Um, 
certain tattoos are, are, are more difficult to, to cover than others because they could be rose in the skin a little bit. They could be the skin could have been pre previously overworked. You know what I'm saying? So I always try to find an image that's bigger and it, it has enough detail to draw your eye away from what I'm covering. So it's kind of like mm -hmm. almost like tricking your mind. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get rid of that tattoo. It's there. Yeah. What you're doing mm -hmm. is just covering it up with something. So you basically, I'm, I'm basically just trying to fool you into thinking that it was never there in the first place. That this you is do a good job. At it, I've, seen, I've seen quite a few of them. And I'm like, I, you can't even see where the other one was. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I try. I do a lot of cover-ups. I've done so many of them that it, it kind of is uh, almost second nature. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost second nature. Yeah. I kind of can look at a tattoo and know what will work to cover that that old tattoo up. You have Danielle Johnson said, very inspiring. You didn't give up. You kept on till you were able to do your passing, J Envy. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. you. Sorry, Margaret. Oh, I didn't forget what I was. See, that's what happened when you get older, man. I don't <laughs> forget what I was going to say. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so funny. That's <laughs> and I said it on TV. I tell you what. <laughs> but I um but um I did I do have a question. Um, do you have any tattoos that you have done that was your own original that you that nobody else has it? They just you just it just came, it was a, a vision or a dream or something, and you just drew it out and that person was like, Well, I like that. I'm gonna put it I mean, and you put it on them, that person. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, because I have several pieces of art as you can see in the studio. I have several pieces of art that just hanging around, and uh, a lot of the Afrocentric stuff that I that I have drawn since it is Black History Month. A lot mm -hmm. of the Afrocentric stuff that I have that I've drawn, and a lot of people be wanting that, you know. But that that comes with the people who got the fresh skin, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who got the don't really want to cover up. They want something. Um, they give you that. They trust in you when they walk in. They trust. Mm -hmm. you. They know they want a tattoo, so they just they trust in you to bring a vision to life. And then they see something like that. They're like, "Well, is that your work?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's my work. I, I draw that. That came from my brain." Oh yeah, I want that. That's dope. Who else got that? Anybody else got that? No, nah, right now nobody got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I want that. So yeah, it, it's happened before. It's happened before. I like the one I saw of uh, Malcolm X. I was just totally blown away when I saw that tattoo of Malcolm X. Thank you. Thank I was you. like, oh my gosh. He, I mean, depicted it perfectly. I was like, man, I said, how do you do that? Can get that? And then the ones of the ones I've seen with the people where you have um, somebody wanted to, uh, to memorialize a person of that either whether they was memorializing them or they just want to picture their kid or whatever on their body. I've been some of the, I've seen some of those too, and I mean, just really good work. I'm not a tattoo person. I don't like tattoos. I can't put. I don't want. I I won't put nothing on this body. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I do like to see what I have watched your work on Facebook, and um, it is phenomenal. I ha I have to say, it is. It is. Thank you. Thank you. That'd be the um. That's what I love about it the most, though. The 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 tattoos that have meaning. You know what I'm saying? Because those are the tattoos that you know that person really thought about that. You know, mm. they really thought about, they really took time, they waited, they're willing to pay the money for your time and your service so you can, and then um, when you do it and you nail it, because it's every portrait is, is difficult. Every portrait is difficult because they know how these people look mm. all the time. They've seen mm. these people all the time. I can only go by the photo that's given to me. Right. So I'm staring at this photo for 15 minutes, coming up with a stencil, and then I'm tattooing it for two and a half, three hours, four hours, you know what I'm saying? Trying to make it look as closest to that person. And when they look down and they, man, that's him. I can't believe, oh my God. They they loving it, the smile, that that feeling, that energy. It's, uh, it just mm -hmm. makes you want to be a better artist. It makes you want to sit down and work on your sketches, doodle and 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 focus and you know what I'm saying and learn new new mm -hmm. tricks new techniques from other artists you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. YouTube University you got YouTube University you want to learn something about some art you can go on YouTube and check it out there's many techniques oh, yeah. you can learn from an artist that if you know how to tattoo you know the basis of tattooing you can apply that those same methods to tattooing yeah. so I love it I love it I love the feeling that I get from people when they see the tattoos that I've done on them and they tell people about the work and they like man 
he's solid, he official with it. You know, I love it. Yeah, you do. You get into your work. You really do get into your um, art work of um, doing the tattoos. Now, um, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm not going to even lie to y'all. That stuff hurt. <laughs> I, I, I'm just keeping it real. You the, whole was, time. Like, the whole time I was in that chair, I was. Have you ever seen somebody? <laughs> you took it like a Gito. You sat there, you ain't <laughs> squirm, you didn't cry. <laughs> you know, you didn't cry. That was, was like me. Oh my goodness. She was holding on so tight. Her, her, her <laughs> shoes probably had dents in them after she <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you, that, look, that's, that's number two. You done got me again today, but it's on. You know, it's on like popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> First, she like, told me I was like dating Flavor um, Flav. Like, <laughs> um, the, on them roller coasters. <laughs> they be going. <laughs> That's how I was. When he was, I said, you almost finished? She said, no, you got, we got a little more to go. I was like, oh, oh my God. Oh, and I cannot, wow. I, I cannot believe how so many people had these sleeves of those things yeah. I'm like, you gotta be out of your mind to be. After a while, you after a while, you get used to the pain too, though. After a while, you get used to the pain. And then, then you gotta understand, you uh, some people in the world, um, it's tattooing, it's therapeutic because you have people who cut themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So instead of them cutting themselves, they come get a tattoo. Mm -hmm. I've actually oh, covered okay. up scar markings for people who have cut themselves. Oh wow! And, they, and it's, it, it, it's soothing, it's relaxing to them. You know what I'm saying? The, the whole tattoo process is relaxing awesome. to them. So in a way, I mean, it's not for everybody. It shouldn't be for everybody. If it was for everybody, then everybody would have a tattoo and it wouldn't be right. too taboo about it. You see what I'm saying? So that's the beautiful thing about what I do. You know what I mean? It's not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And that's cool. It, you know, you cool, you cool if you don't have a tattoo. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you cool if you do. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I think I like the old fashioned way the best because that little pin sticking the little pin. What's the old fashioned way? The peel and stick it on your arm. No. <laughs> well, it's, no, Jackson, the real old fashioned way. One. The real old fashioned way is the way they used to do it like in Polynesia with the stick and they had like these little bone uh, needles that they had. Mm -hmm. They used to mm -hmm. ink and they would hit and it make this noise like tattoo, tattoo, mm -hmm. tattoo. So that's basically kind of how, how they came up with the name. But us in the hood, us black folks, we took that little sewing needle, you did mm -hmm. put a little string around that joint, had a little Indian ink and was out there poking. Yeah. His, poking and it was easier. Yeah. Right. You know? Only thing about it, only thing that that with that doing it that way is they got to smack your arm. Wherever you get this tattoo at, they going to smack it. And I don't I think even know if they were supposed people, to do that. Right, I, I think some people just enjoy hitting you. Right, I don't, I don't think that was very sanitary. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, like, I don't back to birth. <laughs> you know, Doing that to an open wound, there, smack it to put it in there. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think that might have not wow. been a good uh, decision, but that was the way they did it back then. From what I heard, yeah. I've never had to do a tattoo that way. I've always used machines, um, uh -huh. but yeah. I don't yeah. know if I, I don't know if I would want to do a head poke tattoo. Yeah, they it seems smack. long. It seems Ooh, long. They, used to, they used to smack the crap out of your if you wherever you get the tattoo, they hit it. And I'm like, do you really gotta hit me like that? They said that's to make the the um eat um go through the through the tattoo. I might might have got smacked back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that was. I don't know if that was, like, I don't know if that was a smart thing. If that was supposed to go down like that, right? Because back then, in them days, people weren't even wearing gloves when they were tattooing. Yeah, you they right. Wasn't. They so, wasn't. And a germs. Sanitary. Yeah, I don't know. But, but like you know, back then, you cut yourself and rub the, the blood with your homie and be like, "Yeah, we blood, 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 you walk away with all kind of diseases. Uh, Danielle Johnson said, wow, awesome story regarding the um, cover-ups. I want to ask you, have you had any um, issues? Like, I, I always want to know, like, do diabetic, diabetic patients, can they get um, tattoos safely? 
And have you ever had an issue with somebody who didn't take care of their tattoo to have to get like an infection or whatever that you know about? Well, thank thankfully, I've never had to deal with that situation. Mm -hmm. um, I try to explain the best the way I uh, possibly can how, how to treat your tattoo and aftercare. I mean, I laugh and I joke with my clients. I have a good time. You know what I'm saying? They know it's pretty cool. But when it's time to get serious and I explain what they need to do with their tattoo, I definitely let them know. But what they do when they leave here, that's, you know, it's not really my responsibility. I can't clean the tattoo for them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I've never had that. I've never actually had that that problem. You know what I'm saying? Thank God. <laughs> you know, because I, on my end, try to make sure that everything is clean in my studio. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Make sure that, I use, that I'm using sanita uh, sanitized needles that are disposable. You know what I'm saying? And it makes sure I'm, the, and I'm wrapping and creating barriers around every surface area. You know what I'm saying? Just so I won't cross contaminate no individual. You know? Now, I'm what about the diabetic? Is it is it safe for someone with diabetes to I'm get sure a I'm tattoo? I'm, I'm sure I probably tattooed a few diabetics and didn't know it. Oh wow! Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I because they don't. Ain't nobody gonna walk in the studio. Yo, I'm a diabetic man. Can I get a tattoo? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was just wondering because you know, like when people go get their nails and stuff done, they yeah. ask them. They ask them sometimes, like, "Are you diabetic?" But I guess, like you say, they probably could lie or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I guess because I have a private studio, mm -hmm. and it's different. It's not like the actual storefront setting mm -hmm. where you know what I'm saying you got four or five other artists, so they probably it probably be a little bit more conscious to do it then at that, in that type of setting. But this is a private setting. Uh, they feel a little bit more comfortable, mm -hmm. and they just they be at ease. They be ready to get a tattoo. They be ready to get a tattoo. Now, I've had clients ask me uh, about situations if there was some blood thinners or about their skin keloiding, uh, certain mm -hmm. situations like that. But never really a diabetic. A person never really just came up to me about that. Mm -hmm. So when they was keloiding, was it because of they was having this problem already? Well, is this something that um, they had after the reaction? Actual, yeah, and there's so many factors. It can be many different factors. Some some people skin naturally uh, keloids open when they get cut open. Some mm -hmm. some uh, the previous tattoo artists who worked on their skin could have went a little too far into their skin. Ooh, oh. because Ooh. We're, we're technically only working off the needle, off the tip of the needle. Oh, so tip. they're not supposed to go too far into. No, nah, it's a certain level. It's a certain level in the dermis that you're supposed to go into, and and you can only really learn and get that feel as you as you tattoo, as you work, as you practice on practice skin. You practice on fruit, fruit. You know what I mean. You practice on pig skin. Then you learn. Just, okay, this is how far I need to get in, and you practice on yourself. You know what I mean. You practice on yourself. Every good tattoo artist pretty much didn't scar their own self up, because you don't want to tear nobody else's skin up. You want to at least know mm -hmm. what you're doing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but there are times where um, an artist who may not be as experienced because uh, some artists don't get an opportunity like I've got an opportunity. Some, some, you know what I'm saying, people of color just don't get those apprenticeships. You mm -hmm. know I mean? It is what it is. It's the truth. It's very hard for a lot of us to get them. And so uh, a lot of us take the fact that we know how to draw mm -hmm. and we want to do tattoos. We, we in a situation where you want to make some money, you want to be... You want to be able to provide for your family. You know what I'm saying? So they get out here and they hustling and they doing it and they scarring some people up. Every artist has a bump in the road in their career where the work ain't wasn't good. You have to start from somewhere. But it's like, uh, do you want to you want to stay a caterpillar or do you want to be a butterfly? Right. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of artists don't get that opportunity to fully be a butterfly, and fully, uh, you know, saying see the full extent of their potential because they never had nobody to kind of bring it out of them. Mm -hmm. So, and in that, in that case, you have a lot of our people walking around here with really bad tattoos. Yeah. And you have people in the white community and those in the Mexican community that see those tattoos and like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to watch <laughs> these people. You know what I'm saying? I can't mm -hmm. get no good photo off they work anyway. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it makes it real hard. So it's, it's, it's just, it's a learning curve. It's a learning curve. But the more the more times brothers like myself get into the field and they learn about tattooing and uh, they, they learn how to do it the right way, you're going to start seeing more cold artists out there. It's a lot of cold black tattoo artists out there. I mean, in the city of Chicago alone, it's, I mean, 
it's to me, I feel like it's a privilege when a, a client come to me. And I'm like, man, you know, I, I, I'm it's a privilege for me to be working on your skin. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't believe that, you know, you allow me to do this when there's so many other artists that's probably better than me. You know what I'm saying? So it humbles me a bit. It makes me want to give them my all. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a privilege for, for that to happen because there's so many other people they can go to. And there's so many bad people they can go to, too. So, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's like I said, it's a learning curve. I really do have a question, though. I don't, I I seen some of your tattoos with um with Chucky and um and them <laughs> and them mean the mean clowns. I don't know how you can do them, man. Cause they, I was like, oh no, I can't look at them. I mean, I, I said, how it. did you do that? Oh, I like you it. scared they gonna come off of the skin and man. get you? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love, doing, I love doing those type of. T- I love doing those type of tattoos. The characters, I love those. T- I know people that get them. I love their energy. They so fun. You know what I mean. They so fun and free about themselves. You know what I mean? You got to be fun and free about yourself to walk around here with a Chucky on your thigh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to be. You know? You, like, you, you a cold individual. That, that's that's the one you better watch out for, too. <laughs> hey. Got a Chucky on her thigh. Got a Chucky on her thigh. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was a young lady, too. So, you know, she really don't care. She ain't playing. You mm. know what I'm saying? But I love it, though. I love doing those type of tattoos. I think... Uh, the, the more that I really liked, I really enjoyed doing flowers, though. Oh, really? Ironically, yeah. I didn't like drawing when I was in school. But now as a t- tattoo artist, I, I really enjoyed doing flowers, all types of flowers on people. Hmm. Yeah. Do you, Fred do you... Beatty. I'm just oh, I'm go sorry. Ahead, go ahead. Fred Beatty said hello, good people. Hey, Fred. Hey, Fred. Hey, Fred. Hey, <laughs> so do you, like, when you close your eyes at nighttime, do you actually see this? tattooing oh like like with me um like with me when i when i started writing i was i would i could close my eyes at nighttime and i see myself writing so what do you like see that nah nah not, no. when, not, not when i close my eyes when i close my eyes at night i really don't see nothing but i just wake up in the next day <laughs> <laughs> So it was you know, no trainer for you or nothing. Mm-mm, no, what it is now, um, I have like I have like uh, vision spurts. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Well, I could be sitting down, and I look at something, or I get inspired by something, and I'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna try to draw this, or I want to paint this. Uh, I think the last painting I did was a few months back. It was a, it was like a multicolored version of a female's body showing the curves. My dad actually got it. He, he got it from me and he got it in his house now. So I don't have it here where I can show you guys the painting, but it was just something I was inspired to do, you know. Oh, wow. But now, because I have to tattoo so much, when I'm tattooing, uh, I'm really just thinking about that, like tattoo flash, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the next tattoo design, yeah. Because I, I draw so many of those. Mm-hmm. And I really don't just have that much time to draw for myself, mm-hmm. which is cool. You know what I mean? Which is cool. I don't want to just kind of be drawing for myself and, you know, and I want to draw for other people. So, mm-hmm. you know. What's one of your inspirations? Um, I know it could be multiple, but, you know, the drive. Well, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, of course inspired by art and the art of tattooing. Um, definitely inspired by music, um, real lyrical old school rap music, um, mm, yeah. traditional form of rap, uh, rap music. Um, really inspired by that. Um, I'm really inspired by by um, our culture, you know, and our, our people. Um, the the upside and the downside, you know what I'm saying? You got to know both sides of of the coin mm-hmm. to fully understand, you know, our struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, so all that inspires me to just uh, to be great and leave a mark and be remembered, you know? Well, that's good. Yeah, I did see one of your tattoos you did where it was um, of, of a black woman and it was like a uh, she had one of them huge naturals, you know, like the afro. Uh huh. I was like, oh man, that's awesome. I was like, how did you do that? Because I mean, it was really nice. I was like, man, I said, you know, I, I was just in awe because I, I was like, 
how did how could you um where did you get it from and then and then how did you um put it all together like that because i mean it it just looked at it just just jumped off the person's skin almost look mm -hmm. when you're looking at it because it it was a it was like a afro it looked like it was an afro with someone in it or something i couldn't can't remember the afro exactly. with the crown in it that yeah was what you was talking about the afro with the crown in it and the script uh yeah. actually that, that was that young lady's idea that had mm. nothing to do with me i just wow. brought it to life yeah that was all her idea she yeah. told me what she wanted and i just drew it and that's why I say it, it kind of stems back from that eighth grade day of me mm -hmm. sitting in a class and somebody is telling me what to draw and I'm just sketching it out. And mm -hmm. all that, all that, who knew that all that, you know, those little bumps in the road would help me get to this point. Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. it was, it was pretty much all her idea. A lot of the tattoos be the client's idea. They don't be really my ideas because a lot of people, they know what they want on their body. Right. But you do have those people who don't know what they want. They just want a tattoo. Hey, like what you got on the wall? You got a book. Uh, I I just want this name. I don't care what you put on there. I just, he he gone. He dead to me. You know what I'm saying? Man, cover her name, my bro. You got a name right here. You know, or they got some Chinese letters that they got in the early 2000s that look muddy now. They don't know what it says because it don't say what it said back in 2000. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So they want all that stuff gone. Yeah. So a lot of times they, they know what they want. I wanted to share with people um, your illustrations too. This is uh, one of the books that you did. Oh yeah, that's dope. Mm -hmm. I like the new cover on that. Uh, I remember yeah. I have the old cover, the original cover. Yeah, this is the original. I have the original here. Yeah, that oh, was wow. the original, and this is the new one he did. New cover, yeah. Mm -hmm. With the smoke fingers telling her to come on. Come on, get yeah. this chicken. <laughs> yeah, when I first seen that, I was like, oh my gosh, this is really nice, dude. <laughs> thank but you, yeah. thank you. That was fun doing that book, too. It was mm -hmm. real fun drawing that book, too. That was at the time when I was um, I was just drawing a lot, trying to get ready for my move, because I was mm -hmm. living in Mississippi at the time, so I was getting ready to move back to Chicago and start my life here and um, start the apprenticeship. And everything so I, it was fun it was a fun time whenever i see that book it's crazy whenever i see that book i'm like yeah that was, it's crazy where i was at at that point in life to where i'm at now mm -hmm. do you think you would have um been as, as successful in tattooing um living in mississippi versus living in chicago uh that's a good question i can't really say if i will be as successful i probably won't be as good Mm, okay. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Because I have a lot of people that support me that know me um, in Mississippi, and um, I was voted most artistic creative in my high school. I was in the newspaper, like uh, holding up the holding up the, the canvas. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's a lot of people that knew what I was capable of down there on the art tip. So I, I probably would have been successful, but I don't know if my work would have been as good because I wouldn't have learned it the proper way. Mm -hmm. I would have had a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. You know, if I didn't have that help, if I didn't have a, you know, if I didn't, have the mentor. I didn't have Joe in my ear, if I didn't have those two individuals, if Philippe didn't take me on and Joe Juggy was nice enough to teach me things, if I didn't have those brothers in my ear, a couple other artists too, you know what I'm saying, that I know, um, my man Terrence, you know what I'm saying, he was, he was another artist that taught me a lot. If I didn't have those brothers in my ear, you know what I'm saying, coach me along the way, and, and, you know, like, yo, try it this way, approach it this way. Mm -hmm. You should do this, you should do that. You know what I'm saying? If I didn't have those brothers in my ear, I probably wouldn't have been as good. Mm. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, y'all, I'm hungry. I haven't ate anything. I have, and I have another question. Have you read, have anybody um, came to you and said, um, my, my son or my daughter, or, you know, is interested in tattooing. Um, can you, can they, can they, um, shadow you or can they just watch how you do it and can you teach them have anybody had um, came to you about that not yet, yet. not yet okay. not yet okay. if they do i mean i'm willing to teach them i don't care yeah. you know if you want to yeah. play you got to be serious about it yeah that's true. i'm not gonna i'm definitely not gonna take it um it took me a long time to get into it i really respect the art of tattooing you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so i'm not gonna allow anybody that learns from me to, to play with it because the person that i 
uh, learned from it didn't allow me to play with it. You know what I right. mean? Still treating me as an equal, as an individual, but let me know how real it is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I'm, uh, this is people's skin. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they are trusting you with a service. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You have to do it the right way and do it the best way you can. Mm-hmm. That's your abilities. They like it, they gonna rock with you. Mm-hmm. Tell um Jason, can you tell people where they can find you on um Instagram and Facebook? Okay, um on Instagram, my original Instagram was hacked. It was the uh, JMB13 tattoos, but I have the hashtag. So if you just want to look at my work, you can hashtag JMB13 tattoos. I'm building my new page now. My new page is Studio Envy Inc. How hi, uh, highlight in the studio um and highlight in the business itself. Um, Stujo is S-T-U-J-O, Stujo, NV Inc. Um, you can check that page out and you can see some of my work there. And you can also find me on Facebook at JNV. Um, yeah. I might okay. I might get a TikTok though. I see everybody's getting a TikTok. You need you need a TikTok. I'll you just need a TikTok. that to you. Because <laughs> when you, you be doing those actual videos where you're doing tattoos and stuff, that would make you oh man oh my goodness people it, love to see that see that yeah mm-hmm. they yeah. actually love that's what it. i've heard that's what i've heard mm-hmm. and i do a lot of background talking with my right video. and they love that kind mm-hmm. of stuff the, the voiceovers yeah. 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 yeah yeah now can you do a favor for us because i know that you can freestyle can you freestyle something Uh-oh. regarding inspirational talks with laura simmons and friends because uh, i know you can do some dome stuff i done seen you do it mm-hmm uh let me see all right let me see what i can do man young man with gun in hand childhood over 16 with lost dreams to be a hood soldier mom sprung on pain pills codeine spills pops gone so it's game on now we in the field joining gang for brotherhood while in the hood life seems good tied down to the lick Really living it, getting it by the bag. Now he moving fast, can't see through the looking glass. When shots blast, blind lead the blind with no direction, just getting money. Younger was once hungry. I don't let it go. I ain't going to keep going. All that. right. That's, good. That's, good. That's, good. That's, good. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's freestyle. That's freestyle for you. you. That's good. Right. I don't want to give you my bars because I, what I don't want to <laughs> do is make you feel embarrassed. By this whole lady, hey, don't embarrass me, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm retired. Yeah, I, I, you, I used to rap too back in the day. All right, so. Ursula. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to rap back in the day too. I used to rap with Ron, um, Shante Roxanne them and stuff back in the day. Oh, that's and, right. Uh, yeah, you know when you were dating those celebrities, flavor yeah. flavor. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I'm gonna get you for that flavor flavor stuff, but okay. <laughs> Daniel Johnson said great questions from the inspirational team and very professional responses made by J Envy, the tattoo artist. Very humble demeanor. Great analogies such as the pad- caterpillar versus the butterfly. Great free freestyle too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Much love. Appreciate it. It was very nice to meet you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate thank it. Appreciate y'all for having me on. You know what I'm saying? Inspirational talks. This was dope. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. For oh, happy belated birthday. You know, oh, yeah. Thank happy you. belated thank birthday to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Here I go. I'm going to verse a line. Oh, you. Lord. <laughs> yeah, I'll put me on the spot. You'll be jealous. That's all. You did. I'm going to start doing like, uh, I'm going to start doing like the mother rappers and have written quotes ready for when people want me to freestyle. So I just. Okay. This is stuff <laughs> like that. Because people well, you. Like, Get it how you ever you can get it. You know what I mean? It's a nice thing. Oh, I'm looking for hey, a freestyling is a lost art. Freestyling okay, is art. it really is. Freestyling, yeah. Is. We don't freestyle that good no more. You know, people people rapping that 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 boom bop route. You know, what I, mean? I don't know what they be saying. I feel like my grandmama. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Can't understand half the joint these kids be saying nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, Danielle say you're welcome. Good to see you and happy belated birthday. Yes, indeed. Thank you. All right. Well. That will bring our show to a closing. Um, thank you guys for tuning in to Inspirational Talks with Laura Simmons and Friends. 
Thank you, Jay Envy, for being our guest today. Yes. And we want to ask everyone that is on the live to please share, comment, like, and follow us on Instagram and our YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. So every time the show come on, you'll automatically get a message letting, letting you know that we are on the air, babies. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I got to I got to wrap out out of this. You know, I'm going to wrap for y'all before we leave the show. You know, oh, no. <laughs> oh, Lord. somebody calling me. No, <laughs> I'm already <laughs> set. no. Oh, I just time ran out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but we thank you. Um, That's what you happened when you date Flavor Flav. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Daniel said the show is very inspirational as always. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure that you share the live. Thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in today. That will be the end of Inspirational Talks with Laura Simmons and Friends. We are off the air. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.